Listen, I thought I had Roswell figured out. I thought that he was an insane clown. But I didn't know what true insanity was. True insanity is when you knowingly just give up your own life without any guarantee that it'll work. But he follows the Grimoire to a T. And every time he's looped, if you think about Arc 1 and Arc 2 stuff, I think he has gotten enough confirmation that, hmm, this Natsuki Subaru kid is the real deal. Therefore, in the actual successful true timeline, that Roswell is fully content with the results he's gotten the Grimoire. But still, for you to just absolutely give away your life, like, if he was regressing, then for sure, I would think that he's not as crazy. But the fact that he's not, and he just willingly gives up his life just for one single thing. What was his lesson? Remove everything. Focus on that one single thing that you want the most and just do everything you can to and achieve it, right? Then you'll become a lot like me. The Suba wall, you know, Roswell Suba, Subaru theories. I don't think it's really there in terms of like, are they the same person? But it does show you like the potential for Subaru to become a person like Roswell if he does adopt this mindset of as long as the ends justifies the means, which is another discussion point that was brought up with the conversation with mom during the trial. There was an exact example about how mom says, oh, it's fine, you know, as long as things work out in the end, that's all that matters. And then Subaru was like, really? Does that mean I can do whatever I want? And then the ends justifies the means? I don't really know like that part, but it's like there is the potential for Subaru to adopt the true insanity and become like Roswell. I don't know if I want it to be like that, but it's kind of fun to think about. The kiss of death. Amelia kisses us and we die. We bleed out from the white rabbits and we're going to loop. This time, what do we do? Roswell is making the snow happen earlier so that the great rabbits will also show up and Amelia is just getting crazier and crazier. Garfield's still going to get mad at us because we're stinky as all hell. You know, Elsa, Melee, they're fucking us up. And Biko, we need to have Biko as number one or she ain't gonna have it, like, I don't know what we're gonna do. Let's begin today's reaction. We're back. The eye's good. The kiss, the kiss of death. But the letter, man. Roswell most likely intercepted the letter, made Amelia more lonely. And in the anime, it was never told, but the cut content confirms that she spammed these trials over and over again. Not just a single time, just multiple times to just make her go crazy, right? Multiple times. Back at Roswell? That sub is kind of sus because the Tomb of Wisdom is only one actual thing, right? But there's two copies. One has Roswell with the other with Biko, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. More like him. Okay. So Subaru will never, he will never be like Roswell. I, I don't want him to be like Roswell. I think that Roswell is such a unique character that he's fine just being himself. And Subaru, he'll figure out his own answers. Echidna. Dirty party? More party. Pride mission. Pride mission. Oh, it worked. It worked. I think. No, this is a trial. This is not a tea party. This is a second trial. Behold an unthinkable present. Because last time it said something about confronting your past. Second trial time. Unthinkable present. Amelia? 
These are the different timelines that goes on after he killed himself. Because this is beginning of season two. When he offs himself because Rem is forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is going to be interesting. We get to see every timeline after Subaru dies? Chris, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, fuck. I don't Damn. Seeing Wilhelm this worked up, and we've already seen Felix get worked up with Julius in the most heroic run when Betrigus possesses Subaru, though. But yeah, I never really thought about like how other characters would be thinking, how they'd be feeling after they find a dead Subaru like that, and these runs that's quote unquote ended, but to them, it just continues. <laughs> Yeah, it must make no sense to them, right? Like, straight up, like, everything is going well. Well, you know, we have the greed and gluttony attacking us, but to see Subaru just dead on the ground like this, and they've already forgotten who Rem is, it must be so confusing. <laughs> Damn, Felix. You're not wrong. This is twisted. <gasps> Did we just fail? I'm not sure. We woke up. I, I, what happened? <laughs> oh. It was a trial. Yes. Here's another one. Here's another one. Which timeline is this? Oh, it's the heroic run, right? This is the one where... This is the most tragic one to me. Well, I don't know about most tragic, but... I really love this ending because he himself was so close to the finish line, but then took himself out of it because he knew everything could end if he just stayed there. Because, like, remember when Julius killed him off of Subaru's request? Amelia looks into the forest as a bunch of crows fly up, and then she walks all the way there. This is a haunting soundtrack. My friend! This is the same soundtrack when Satala showed up, right? Yeah, with the darkness enveloping everything. My friend. <laughs> Not over yet. Here we go. Here's another one. Oh shit. Arc 2. Episode 7. He jumps off the cliff after doing this to Bieko, and then what? <laughs> that little... <laughs> Classic. And back then... It was such a triumphant moment after we troll Betty with the drill horns, right? Then we jump off, happy music is playing, and we think that everything is fine. It is. But to them, in more context of what Biko has been waiting for this entire time, and that hope in the back of the mind that, like, maybe you could have been that person, and now he's dead. And that's why Biko never wanted to see Subaru die in front of her, right? <laughs> There's another one. Episode 15. This is the episode 15 death, right? With Puck cutting our head off. Bruh. Bruh. Because, like, I was always wondering when Puck decides to end this world, right? 
what happens? People are just not going to sit there and take it. Reinhardt exists. So Reinhardt finally shows up versus Puck. I'm probably going to assume Reinhardt wins. Yeah, he's just too powerful, right? The end of Beast, the world ending Beast. He and I are equally guilty. Subaru and Puck. Puck, you don't do shit, but I understand that you can't, you're bound by it. The Dragon Sword. Ryuken does not get drawn unless the opponent necessitates it. Like episode 3, Elsa. That was not a taunt. Reinhardt was not taunting. He simply could not. The sword literally will not come out unless it's a worthy opponent. And once it does come out, it's, it is said that losing is not an option when the dragon sword has been drawn. So, are these effects supposed to show me lesser spirits? Or is this just random effects? Because when I see d balls like this, I think spirits, but as soon as he drew it, boom, I don't know. Just mana? I wonder what happened here. Puck's fangs, they're broken here. Now, I wonder if that's specific to this run, or if it's always been broken like that. Or maybe they've already clashed a couple times, and we're just seeing this right now. I don't know. That's crazy. So this is like the true form of what we see in our, like episode 3, but with the dragon sword. Dude, the sky gets fucking split. Dude, what is this shit? Yeah, 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 it's not even close. It's not even fucking close. Reinhardt is just too strong. Nobody seemingly can defeat this guy. He just is just Mr. Hacks God mode. <gasps> Episode 1! This is where I think the Pact of Satella was formed. This is where I think it all happened, bro. Surely he wanted me to end it as quickly as possible because Roswell did actually not give orders to Rem to do it. Rem literally killed off of her own instincts off of the witch's miasma. <laughs> Just remember, these guys... I want you to realize that these dudes have faced a goth against the strongest beings in the verse, Free Zero verse. These street thugs have faced off against Reinhardt and won. Maybe not won, but survived. These dudes have faced off against... I'm not sure exactly how strong they are, but one of the strongest beings in the Valachian Empire 2 in the past, and have survived. These dudes, on paper, have an insane fucking resume. They've also killed Natsuki Subaru. The undefeated genius that knows fucking everything. These street bandits. The youngest one, the, the dude with the mushroom haircut. This kid has a divine protection of being good in bed. These dudes are no simple characters. I want you to really appreciate what they are, guys. Behold. I am Mediator. Rem, 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 rem. Rem. Oh shit, it's her. That's Cap. You're not here. Nope. Delusion. Delusion. This is a part of the trial? Or delusion? <laughs> All purpose. No, she's gone. Oh, 
He is so harsh on himself. And this is a repeatable, like, a repeating theme over and over. Like, I truly don't blame Subaru for everyone else dying around him. It's such an impossible task that he's been given. He has so much guilt over this. Mm. That is a haunting thing to think though, right? Because like up until now the guilt has been like other people dying around him while he's looping. But now to think that all those different loops, it still goes on. And all those people have to just deal with it. Like, imagine how insane it must be, right? <laughs> Oh. How the hell is Rem being our fundamental like pillar of emotional support even after Gluttony erased her? I know this isn't the actual Rem, but it's just like damn, even in this current state, she's still here clutching. <laughs> ありがとうございます。サウンドトラック。サバル君の思い。レムが変わる。レムに預けて。Really?今はゆっくり。なあ。Moments of weakness and to not take the easy way out. This is definitely part of the trial. No. <laughs> Cut the soundtrack. Yep. Exactly. This is not what Rem would say. Who could it be? Is it a kid in disguise? Who is this doing right now? Is it just an illusion? <laughs> ひざ続けてる時お前ならきっと優しく寄り添ってくれお前は俺の弱音を聞いて泣き言を吐き出させて涙も枯れるくたってくださいってそう言うんだ。That's <笑> Do you love her though? You're good to me and you love me, okay? Yes, you like me and I like you, yes? True。Good line. I was gonna punch the fake rem for a second. That would have been everything, bro, if he just punched the rem, but that was a good line. I will show you my weaknesses and my vulnerabilities, but I'll never show you me giving up. Right. Whose voice is this? Oh, um, um. It's a witch? I think it's a witch of lust based on the illustrations that we've seen in the NEU's cut content, right? Because there's Sekhmet left, which is like a MILF, I think. And then there's Lust Girl. I don't know her name. I think it starts with a C. It's gotta be her though, right? Carmilla? I think that's the one, yeah. Carmilla. She doesn't seem very lustful. Maybe I don't know enough of her. But like her personality, she seems very weak and like... I don't know, when I think about lust, I think of like a very confident woman who is just like seducing people like a succubus. But this is the exact opposite. <laughs> It's not her fault. It's because of us she looked like that. Interesting. I feel bad for this girl, man. I feel bad for Carmilla, bro. Subaru is just so fucking hostile right now. Oh. Tea party. Hey, we're back. Tea party.
Faceless Bride. <laughs> you, 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 you're literally out of breath. She's so hot, like the embodiment of lust. You forget to breathe because she's so hot. Okay. Interesting. You stole my breath. You've taken my breath away. True. Another situation where Echidna helps our soul from being shattered from the mental collapse of what's going on. So can we assume that Amelia's soul was shattered? The last run? Because she went mind break mode after facing the trials over and over again after realizing that Subaru has left her and she needs to try to do something for herself. Like, I'm always wondering, what does like a broken soul really mean? Maybe Amelia is an example to Yandere mode? Let's get mad at her. No? Drink the tea again? Unreality. Well constructed unreality. Okay, now I know that we've been getting more hints here and here, right? Uh, we've been literally told that like Satala's given us the power. We've been told that we have a pre existing pact that we didn't even know about. And last episode, Roswell literally says, you know, pact with Satala. But now it's just like, yes, it's the authorities being mentioned. We have the Witch of Envy's authority. But there was an interesting line from any news videos or Echidna's videos where it didn't feel like our power is ours, but more like we're kind of borrowing it. We don't really determine the checkpoint. You know what I mean? So are we just borrowing the Witch of Envy's authority? Is it really ours? Like, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. True. Because if you break down now, then I can't have more fun content out of you. No matter what you might think about Echidna being helpful and being there for us, even in that episode where like, we said our deep secrets that we could never tell anyone to Echidna, even if she seems all that holy and nice, I don't think we should trust her. At least not like that. Like, keep her guard up a little. She's a witch. And she seems to be the most reasonable witch so far. I, mean, I don't know, Carmilla's pretty reasonable too. But I think at the end of the day, this is due to her bottomless greed for knowledge, and Subaru just seems to be able to be very entertaining. Yeah, you're gonna say that you've fallen in love with Subaru, and that's why you're doing this, and it's not for just the content? Maybe it can be both? <laughs> okay. For what? Okay. Okay. What do I get out of it? Hmm. That sounds too good to be true. When things are too good to be true, you should be kind of sus about this. You're telling me at any given moment, you'll literally be able to come with their solutions. I, 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 I don't really know how to feel about that. I don't know. Also, the umbrella symbols here. You see the pattern? You guys see this? Kind of looks like a four-leaf clover, but... Hmm. After all, I can share in your return by death ability. Above all, I can share in. What do you mean by that? Share in. What's the negatives? What is the cons? What do you get out of it? It sounds like <laughs> See, Anastasia wouldn't have 
folded like this here. Echidna's excitement got the better of her. I think that you're showing your cards early. If, if you held it, dangling what we wanted in front of you, maybe he would have accepted. <coughs> Chill. Only I wouldn't mind. You know, I'm doing you a favor if you want to do it. You want to? Oh yeah, we did with a vehicle before. Yeah, we held a hand shit, remember in Arc 2? I don't think he should. No. I don't think this feels right. Even like like the things that we get out of it, it's very good. Every solution could be made because the kidnap would have the knowledge. She could just help us. She also shares in our secret about return by death. It sounds too good to be true. There must be some sort of cast. There must be something that's even more beneficial for a kidnap to go out and help like this. <laughs> she can just show up? I thought that... Other witches could only show up if Echidna herself isn't there because it's like a replacing the souls, like every the souls in there. I don't know. Last time, it was only one witch at a time, right? She's always crying. Is she? Okay. I don't know. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> this cap? I listen to you and memorize all the rules for fucking nothing. They can just show up whenever they want. Alright. One of them. Yeah, what's the compensation? That's crazy that he almost agreed to the contract without even asking what she gets out of it. Like, bro literally just signed something without realizing what the fucking price point is. Like, what do you think is gonna happen, bro? What do you what do, you, what do you mean the taste of it? This, this, you need to be more detailed, girl. But it sounds like if we make a contract, it sounds like everything that I am, everything I'm about becomes yours. <laughs> Carmilla. <laughs> I love how right now Echidna is trying to fucking force us to sign this like legal binding contract without us making us read the fine details and everyone else is like, wait, 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 dude, you don't even know what kind of deal you're getting yourself into. The other witches are actually coming and helping us out. It seems like the different witches were kind of fond of Subaru though. Well, at least it seemed like it because, you know, they had like pet names for Subaru like Tifone did, you know, Daphne did. It's, and he does seem to be a... He's been a lolly master recently, but I think the same can be said with the witches. I mean, there's already multiple lolly witches too, but he is really good with the witches. Uniter, Pleiades. What is she hiding? Is it the future I desire? Or is it the future that you desire? <laughs> what? Okay, that must be segment, right? This wouldn't be the promise you always proceed with in the end. In the end. That's an interesting line. <laughs> segment, <slot. laughs> she seems like out of breath. And she's just like lying down because she's slothful, because she's tired. And she's the one that drove the dragon Volcanica beyond the Great Waterfall, right? According to lore. Yeah. Watchdog. Is she gonna sigh after every line? <sighs> it's a party, man. Everyone's here. <laughs> what are the odds of Satala showing up? 
But she couldn't show up last time, right? Because this is the dream castle. And these are all the souls that reside in the witch's graveyard along with Echidna. And Satala last time was very mad because we <laughs> turned her phone off and went to a party with Echidna. Is she going to be waiting for us outside after this? I don't know. <laughs> Six witches, man. Remember, Pleiades. Six witches. Six witch factors. I mean, the number seven is subtly included too, but it's just always an interesting thing to remember that Subaru's name is based off of Pleiades, which is called like the Uniter, and there's like the rule of six and sevens, which refers to the witch factors, the archbishops, the number of witches, and him like collecting them. In the end. In the end? Yeah. What is the best possible path? And does she have the Tomb of Wisdom? Someone as greedy as her. Someone as so desperate for knowledge. And she is even saying the best possible path, future. It seems like she might have the Tomb of Wisdom? <laughs> So her best path could come at the cost of more situations like Rems. Yeah, no, we don't like this. Yeah, no, we can figure this shit out ourselves. I feel like taking the easy way out with her solutions is going to cause even more problems for us at the end of the day. Nah, 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 nah. Wait, 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 she says this shit, but if she had returned by death, do you think that she would be this optimistic and hopeful? Like, it's easy for you to say because you've never experienced this kind of trauma and I don't know, but she's a witch. Maybe she's built different mentally and she'd be just able to do it if she had it. Alright. More knowledge. More data. Oh, she is nappy. It would be a very optimal combo though, right? Because we have unlimited tries and she has unlimited knowledge. Seems like it at least. And she could help us to get to the best path every time. My maidenly heart's affection for you in desire to <laughs> Maidenly heart's affection, bro. She don't care about being main wife. She don't even be, want to be a concubine. She's like, just use me all you want as long as I get the content out of you. She's popping off. She's really having a mask off moment right now, bro. Holy shit. This feels like a trance. Oh. Wait. Right, removing the barrier. Oh, it's, it's changing. Okay, the smile is changing, bro. The, 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 the fucking... The face is becoming more creepier, bro. She hasn't really blinked in a while, and the, the camera has just been spinning the entire time. She is popping off. She just wants Subaru to use her. Because at the end of the day, the data that we get, the content we, she gets out of it, that's all she ever wants. This is probably to her something that she's always wanted. It is a crazy power if you think about it, right? Especially for someone as greedy as her for knowledge. And it would make the ultimate pairing. But something about this just doesn't feel right, you know? Something about this just does not feel right. Oh, 
a vow of love. Your Satala would not be happy about this. Uh-oh, she's gonna show up outside, bro. She's gonna be mad as fuck. Subaru, I think you have to reject her. A part of me wants to accept this contract and go forth. But here's, here's another very interesting thing. Huh? If we make a contract with her, let's say we die. And we go back to when we didn't make a contract yet. A contract does not transcend timelines. You know what I mean? Let's say we took the deal and immediately we got, we got out. And, you know, a court, a court, due to her knowledge, right, we probably wouldn't die. But let's just assume that we would die immediately and we reset. The contract would be gone and a kid that would have no idea, right? Or would it always be there? I know that she knows that we return by death, but what about the contract? A soul binding contract. I guess a soul does transcend, you know, just the physical bodies. It's etched to the soul. So this does transcend time then. Hmm. That's really interesting to think. <laughs> All the other witches. <laughs> a kid that just went on a fucking five minute yapping session. Reactions. <laughs> Live reactions from review one of them. And I'm going to use you when you use each other. I think that is a very interesting thing. 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 She is a witch. I think that is a very interesting thing. I think that is a very interesting thing. Giving you everything, that's kind of problematic. Infantile It's a witch. Feels like Super is interacting with like robots or something, but like the compassion, like, but she's not a regular human that would act that way, right? She's a witch, so isn't this expected? Alright, is there a next time? Okay, next time she'll cry. Next time she'll be angry. Uh, are, we, are we still doing it? How are checkpoints made? Like, please. Can, can, can we ask about the checkpoint mechanic? Or is Tape gonna conveniently fucking smuggle this question that everyone has underneath? Also, the vehicle stuff, I do want to know. Why did you make Biko wait 400 fucking years? Yup. Yup. So now it's pretty much confirmed that Puck and Biko are both, both the products of Echidna. I have no idea how spirits are created. But if you look at the butterfly hints that's been everywhere, right? And with this example, and with the 400 year, everything goes back to 400 years, right? Cl great calamity. Echidna being sealed here. The birth of Biko. Birth of the white whale. Everything happens 400 years ago, bro. Like, does she have the Tomb of Wisdom that would tell her, like, that one would actually come as if this is a real prophecy? Or is she fucking around? Good question. <laughs> to her own kid. And now... I don't know if she has any motherly love for her children because they're spirits. But for how is a kid nut gonna justify this action in his video? <laughs> this is crazy. Four hundred. You gave her an empty fucking prophecy. You don't know shit. But I, I <laughs> sociopath. Absolutely cold. <laughs> What? Huh?
No, it's not. There is a purpose. The purpose is for Biko to have her own independent thought. To choose who that person... But it's a weird... This is a fucked up social experiment, man. This is pretty messed up. I can definitely understand how this may seem like a mom wishing individuality for the daughter to figure out something she wants for herself. But at the same time, Jesus Christ. It's her fault? Damn. How does she feel about that? I don't think she feels anything. I think that she feels probably finds it interesting. She's probably excited to see what answers Biku's gonna have after 400 years. I mean, they are witches. Up until this episode, Echidna has seemed to be a very reasonable and quote unquote normal witch, if you compare her to some of the other ones, right? It seems like we could trust her, but behind this pretty face, she was always greedy for knowledge and everything that she's done to help us out. Remember, just like the moment when Subaru was literally getting therapy from Echidna and how we shared the secret. It's all for her self-interest too. Of course, we're getting some mutual benefit out of it, but at the end of the day, she is a witch and we're finally seeing that. <laughs> Oh my god. I guys, did you know? Oh my god. Oh my god. I think she might be a witch, guys. I. Oh, greatest mystery of Re Zero. Oh my god. Biko, take Biko's hand. And honestly, because of Echidna's secret reveal here, Subaru is probably going to get more motivated, have more incentive to want to be that person for Biko, right? Based, going with the daughter instead of the mom. Uh, uh, uh. Satala can't show up, right? Unless I couldn't lie to me. W w what is this darkness being casted over right now? <gasps> She's here. How? How can she show up inside? It but I thought this only is possible in the dream castle because everyone was sealed here and the souls were collected together when Echidna and everyone else was killed by Satala. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, Akina looks mad. <laughs> Alright, she has a nickname. Also. Tifo's transparent dresses. I just realized. <laughs> I never really paid attention to her dress, but the more I look at Oh god. <laughs> oh god. How is she here? Oh, look at that drip. She's like black and gold, huh? The stockings. You know, we got the gold parts here. The gold flowers as well. Black, purple veil. Look at this drip, man. How are you here, though? That's today's episode of ReZero, the Witch's Tea Party. I am confused because I thought that, like, uh, her clothes are the same as Subaru's. No. Hey! Motherfuckers only see the black and gold parts. And it's orange. It's more orange than fucking gold. Maybe you can do some fucking mental gymnastics. Is it, is, it, what about the white, bro? Where's the white? But it does match. The white could be her hair. It's silver. I don't fucking know. I, and also, fuck it. All right. She, she color coded it according to Natsuki Subaru's, you know, <laughs> jumpsuit. But that's today's episode, man. I have no idea how Satala is able to show up because, you know, in the, in the run where Satala showed up at the end, outside of the dream castle, she showed up because her soul is supposedly sealed away, right? Even her body is not broken, but 
Unless this is some sort of partial soul that Echidna, like, took with her? I don't know how the fuck this is possible, but hey, every witch has shown up. Today's episode was very interesting in terms of the different timelines that I always wondered, like, what happens when people just see Natsuki Subaru just dead on the ground? It makes me- it, it must make no fucking sense, right? Like this Wilhelm one, it's just like, how the hell did we just subjugate everything and you just kill yourself like this, right? Like, how the hell is any of this shit happening? My favorite one is probably the Reinhardt versus Puck moment, because I was always wondering what happens when the ender of the beast, ender of the world, like the beast that's going to end the world is going to show up as like a danger threat to the calamity to the world. Reinhardt supposedly will, right? And we get to actually see the dragon sword be drawn. I'm not sure. Now, don't spoil me, but... Well, Arc 5, Reinhardt, there has to be a villain that necessitates the Ryuken from being drawn, but here it is, a very rare sight. This sword will not be drawn unless the opponent is actually worthy of doing so, and we get to see more of that shit. And then it was all about Trial 2, right? This is Trial 2, about like facing your presence. Carmela came in to kind of like, I guess, help us? Right? Echidna sent Carmilla so that our soul wouldn't get broken. But at the same time, what, you know, uh, Rem in the mode of Carmilla was saying was, you know, it's not the Rem that we remember, so we just kind of shit on Carmilla. And then the rest is about making a contract with Echidna. And <sighs> this contract seems too good to be true. And at the end of the day, the if greed story is probably going to be crazy. The Echidna Yap session was pretty crazy. And then her smiling face turning into a demented smile as we realized that she's simply just a witch that just wants knowledge out of us, right? She's a she's not a regular human. She's a fucking witch. Like, what did you expect, right? We're going to see, we're starting to understand more and more that we shouldn't let her guard down around these beings known as witches. And finally, Satala shows up. Who knows how? Echidna has the stankiest face for Satala. She hates her, man. And... What's she gonna say? Tifo seems to be very happy to Satala, but she's sewn up. If she only shows up and only says, I love you, I love you, I love you, <laughs> I'm not really sure. But hey, that's it for me. If you're still here, though, if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlists for more content. And until next time, take care.